Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs. And how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. I'm your host, as always, hasn't changed in more than 100 episodes, Seth Goldstein. How's it going? Just call me Seth. I don't know why I said Seth Goldstein. And I'm here with (laughs) T, my buddy T, Adderola. He is on the MPN network with me. He has a show called Tiny Giants, where he talks about what all parents are going through right now. There are tiny giants. There are kids and their technology usage and their love for YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Snap. Nah, I'm not sure Snapchat. I don't know about that one. But, you know, the use of technology to be creators. Did yes. I get that right? It's yes. the, the creator economy with the tiny giants, not the big giants. That's right. The tiny giants. Because they're the ones that got to figure out it. it's the adults that we have to get up to speed. Because, oh. I mean, let's face it, we've all got caught flat-footed. With this one okay. oh my like, god like my this, kid's like, I it want didn't a come with channel. the manual yeah. my, my kid was like i want a youtube channel he was five i'm like no <laughs> he's 10 now don't tell google google thinks he's 13 but whatever right i'm sure they'll but, figure know. it out i don't really think they care it's more of a compliance thing for them no but. i think i think between 10 and 13 so yeah. i think he's already at a teenage level so he's fine yeah and i subscribe and i watch his videos and some of them are awful but some of them are actually kind of entertaining. Some of them, yeah. are like, he's like, hey, it's your boy. Catch all cat. I love it. You get that. Where do they pick up the language? Hey, it's, like, it's, yeah, the I mean, pot, it's the melting pot, baby. It's the melting pot of the internet. Yes. I know, but he, call, he calls everyone bro. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bro is like from when we were kids. I mean, yeah. even when I'm a kid, I'm a <laughs> but like, yo, yo, bro, yeah. yo, bro, yo, dude. Uh, he doesn't use dude, but he's his bro. He calls his friends bro. And I'm like, yep. oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? You are not so alone. So you Apple are service. so you are an educator, first yes, and foremost. You do a lot more than just tiny giants. You are out there to help stop the first incarceration of mm-hmm. people, but also the recidivism. Recidivism. Hey, I had to yeah. practice it too. It's, it's not a Recidiv- easy word. Recidiv- I can't forget. Just keep going. <laughs> recidivism. <laughs> recidivism. <laughs> but, but your goal is to get people so that they're not going to go back in, that they're going to people in society and whatnot. So yeah. how did this all start? I know you, you born and raised, we'll say Cincinnati, even though you said it was Dayton technically. Yeah. No one well, knows what the hell Dayton is. I'll, I'll get, it'll start a fight. I'll get put oh, out. Oh, your I'll mom will be like, honey. If I read Cincinnati. Our I was born, born in Cincinnati, but I'm from Dayton. From yeah. Dayton. Dayton's, I hear Dayton's a cute little town. Is it? It is. It is. It's called the yeah. Gem City. It's a nice little gem, not a diamond, but you know, we'll be a ruby, maybe an emerald. Nice little gem, yeah. Gem City. Oh, an hour north cute. of Cincinnati. Uh, you're, so you're oh, so you're between Columbus and Cincinnati. Yes, smack dab between actually, yes, yeah, smack dab. So between you can go to Columbus the capital, and, and you can go to Cincinnati, and then you can go visit yep. Jason, our fearless yes. leader in Kentucky. In Kentucky, yeah. He's, well, he's not that far, isn't he? He's, he's not far like, at all. 
Have you have you have you met him in person yet? Oh yeah, hell yeah. He oh, met, Jason was life. actually the he was the opening keynote at the very first digital marketing conference I ever attended, Amp Digital in downtown Cincinnati in 2015. He was the so. first keynote at my first digital marketing conference back in 2009. Nice. Yeah, and I so met him, and I stayed in touch with him because he's such a sweet guy. And this yeah, is enough about Jason. Enough about this. Talk about Farrell Slear. Let's talk about you. So, how did you get into the entrepreneurial journey? How did this it's all get funny. started? I don't know that I found you. it, or if, or if it found me. So, ah. um, I was one of those kids where, starting out, I always knew that I did not want to go to corporate America. So it's funny that I ended up teaching and I did and find my way back there. But starting out, you when found I you, but you ended up in corporate America anyhow. Right. <laughs> found it anyway. But so when I graduated high school, way, way yeah. back in 2002. We're the same age, pretty much. Yeah, okay. pretty much. So back when I graduated high school. You still have the gray school, hair. You don't have the gray hair. A little bit. It's starting. And I'm not wisdom, thrilled about wisdom, it. Like wisdom, just for the men. Hair. Yeah, the just for hair. men. It's starting to target me on YouTube and I'm pissed about it. Like, oh. Seth, <laughs> BS you not. Real quick before I get into the origin story. Yeah. I was watching a YouTube video and I get a Just For Men commercial. And, you know, sometimes they'll back to back the commercials. It was followed by a Cialis commercial. I was pissed. Oh. No, Blue Chew. It was Blue Chew. Blue Chew was the one because I had just got finished watching Death Battle. Uh -huh. like, so they hit me with they Just For Men you. and Cialis. They know people. You should they know have, people. Bro, you should have seen. You talking about your kid? You should have seen my face. I'm standing in front of the screen like, like, what? And of course, I'm like, why am I seeing this ad? And I'm like, no, it's not relevant. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I was completely out of that. I was completely Oh, they find me. Like, I got a remarkable tablet. And <laughs> within a day, I'm getting ads for all the competitors. And I'm like, I bought it. Like, mm -hmm. Leave me alone. That's how it so, happens. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, back to your entrepreneurial journey. Back yeah. to your journey. Yeah. So, I basically, again, I was not looking forward to corporate America, just for a variety of reasons. And so I went to Google and I typed in how to make money online. Ooh, and I was- Original creator. Yeah. And I was beset with a whole bunch of, let's call them non-ethical players that I did not recognize as such. Mm, uh -oh. At the time, I did not recognize yeah. them as such. I just thought that this is how you make money online. So I did a bunch of stuff that I don't do anymore, but I, I, I got ushered into the whole link farms and masking oh, and, and keyword stuff. Oh, come on. Everyone's done. Oh, everyone's yeah, done everyone that. Did. I have to do SEO for people and I've done crap like that. And then yeah. you know what? Your site disappears from the internet. And you're like, oh. Or okay. if you're like me, you actually take people's money. You open up an agency and you're like, yeah, I can do this for you. You take their money and then you promptly get the campaign shut down and the yeah, site be indexed and it's like crap. And now you need to go apologize to Google saying we're so <laughs> sorry. We won't do this again. Exactly. So um, I did a whole bunch of stuff. I did um, Black Hat. I did yeah. network marketing. I sold Kirby vacuum cleaners door to door. Uh, wow. For a time, I was the wholesale chairperson for GD Rhea. Um, I know that sounds like a venereal disease, but it's not. Um, GD Rhea stands for the Greater Dayton Real Estate Investor Association. Oh, so they gotta I, change that. Yeah, change but they go by them. GD Rhea. <laughs> so yeah, not the yeah. best branding. But so I was just I was hustling. I did a whole bunch of entrepreneurial things, and yeah. then it finally dawned on me. So one day, and it, and it is a true story, and. I was a manager for a local rap artist who I went to high school with. So I was Ooh, doing all fun. of these things. And I write about this in my first book. One of the one day I was an author. So there you and go. I was author. And so I'm online posting a listing for a house I'm wholesaling on Craigslist. And then I, I'm also making a post about a show my man's got going on. I'm trying to promote it. And my mother had just written a book. So I'm helping her push Ooh, it. Ooh, entrepreneurial family. Yeah. And so it hit me like a cartoon and like a ton of bricks Anvil, yeah. that for all, as different as sorted as all of these activities were, the one thing they all had in common besides me was yeah. digital advertising. So I was a digital marketing entrepreneur. But you knew it, yeah. yeah. I was feeling my way through it and I was spinning my wheels and I knew it because the thing about Google, which is nothing wrong with learning on Google, that's how most people start, but my learning was very reactive in nature, meaning I want to do that or I want to do that. And so th there were, yeah. there were holes in my skill set, mm -hmm. And so I knew it. And so after 10 years, after just winging it and yeah. trying a bunch of different stuff and some things I liked, others I didn't like, 
because even though I did have a degree of success in real estate and the wholesale yeah. real estate, I noticed that I, I don't like negotiations. Mm, like even, even when yeah. they go my way, I do not like negotiating because I'm a giver. I enjoy yeah. giving. I enjoy pouring into people. I like showing up and I find yeah. negotiations to be a very take oriented process yeah. how meaning, can you get the most out of it yeah. for yourself yeah how can i and give up as little as possible we're gonna take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show hey it's jason with the marketing podcast network you have less than one month left to get special early bird pricing for the creator economy expo 2023 this event folks is for content creators and entrepreneurs interested in building and growing their content first businesses do not miss this show join over 500 bloggers, podcasters, authors, newsletter writers, speakers, consultants, and freelancers at the learning and networking event for content creators. Plan to attend May 1st through the 3rd in Cleveland, Ohio. Register now to secure early bird pricing before it disappears March 31st. Early bird pricing ends March 31st. As a special offer, you can get $100 off just for listening to MPN shows like this one. Go to cex.events to register. Use the coupon code MPN100. The address, the URL, cex.events. That's the whole thing. Type that into your browser. cex.events, the code you use, MPN100. The Creator Economy Expo, Cleveland, May 1st through the 3rd. See you there. Content marketing, SEO, competitive research, advertising. Sounds like a large scope of work you need to get done. How about full digital marketing control over your business? SEMrush can be your right hand for that. It has over 50 tools and reports to cover any online marketing activities. No more switching from one service to another. Get a 14-day free trial and watch your business grow. Go to bit.ly slash SEMrushMPN. That's B-I-T dot L-Y, bit.ly slash sem rush mpn so you want to mm. take as much as possible and give up as little as possible yeah. and as a giver anytime i'm put in a position where the objective is to give as little as possible that's a losing proposition for me because mm. i like giving so even in negotiations when i was victorious when i had successfully beat the person down on the price and i got the property for the price i wanted it didn't feel good because i don't get nothing out of beating up on people you know what i mean no. So yeah. anyway, after about 10 years of just various entrepreneur activities, I decided to get serious about the whole digital marketing thing. And in 2012, I went back and I got my bachelor's degree in digital marketing from Full Sail University. And from there, that's when I, I moseyed my way on back to corporate America for a short stint. And I did search social media and email marketing campaigns for national and international conglomerates, including wow. Cox Media Group. Echo right. Brands, which owns most of the brands in the office and school supply space. So Five Star, yeah. Trapper Keeper, Mead, At a Glance, Daytime. Like trapper these kids keeper. today, oh, Trapper Keepers, that. baby. Oh. Trapper Keepers. Like that, that was the thing. You yeah. had to have a fresh outfit your first day of school and you had to have that Trapper Keeper. Deco trapper Keepers were like your own book. You decorated them with pins. You drew on them. You're definitely a 90s boy. Yeah, for sure. And so, F, fun fact. Yeah. Trapper Keeper, like my birthday is uh, June. I was born in June of 84. Trapper yeah. Keeper is only like three months older than I am. Trapper Keeper oh. was incepted. And I want to say if memory serves and Google us and fact check, because I want to say it was like March or February of 84. Oh, so wow. I, tra I'm the same age as Trapper Keepers. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and so I went through all those experiences. And my last corporate gig was I did a brief stint at Procter & Gamble. Ooh. On one of their newer brands called See Me Beauty, which was makeup for ladies who remember the 80s, a.k.a. Ooh. 50 plus. But uh, they don't like to be called 50 plus in marketing messages. They prefer 80s girls. So that's what we call it. And so yeah. I learned a lot about menopause, actually, which was which is interesting. Maybe marketing you works. your mom a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Kind of thing. Marketing works no matter who you do it for. So going through all those experiences in my stint back at corporate America, I was typically the only black face in the room Oy. and yeah. i was often complimented oh, on geez. just the way that i speak and my creativity and the lens through which and I they were it was never meant to be nasty but it yeah. came across ew <laughs> right true story and so yeah. then it dawned on me because growing up and i'll spare you the whole domestic disaster that was my early childhood but yeah. growing up i was that kid i fought a lot had truancy issues got suspended Ooh. all the time because i would get teased because of my name 
and they would call me like it's African awesome booty. Awesome to him though. Yeah, it really is. But they would call me like African booty scratcher, and tar baby, and all this other stuff. Oh, and but I was not so mean. Yeah, I was not very witty when I was a child. So no. I would just steal on it. I, I there there was no comeback. There was no nothing. I would just get straight to swinging and throwing chairs and stuff. And so I would often get put out of school. And like I graduated oh. high school with something stupid, like a one point nine six GPA. Hey, at least you got a number. Like yeah. That. <laughs> right. But somehow I managed to avoid the pitfalls of the system and go on yeah. to have a degree of success in entrepreneurship as well as a professional career. And yeah. so then I noticed the gap in education, particularly as it pertains to digital marketing, but the creator economy in specific, because I have kiddos of my own now. Yeah. And so all of all three of my children have a 13 year old, a nine year old and a six year old. All oh, three of them want to be creators. Oh, God help you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no, T. So, oh, no. Oh, no. And so I noticed this gap in the market. Yeah. And so far as back in our day, there was an alignment between parent, child, and school as it pertained to career trajectory. And so far as if you walked into a third grade classroom and asked a bunch of seven and eight year olds, this is way back in the early 90s, back when we were kids, what they wanted to be when they grow up, mm-hmm. you'd hear doctor, lawyer, engineer, that sort of thing. You're and right. your kids are like, creator. Yeah. Yeah. And the schools were set up to produce those professions. Sure. And this is important. The parents understood the value to both their family as well as society that mm-hmm. their child become a doctor, that their child become a lawyer, that their child go it's on. It's crazy, XYZ. dude. It really is. Because yeah. you, when you think about it, those are great professions. And some kids are going to be great at that. But they're very cookie cutter. You know? mm-hmm. They're very not. It's like nowadays, like I wish my kid did more. Yeah. I wish my kid did more activities, more like outdoor stuff. But he's on the computer constantly. Yeah. And he, but he's on the computer with his friends and they're doing videos. It's the mm-hmm. new social norm. Yeah. Every once in a while, he'll have a friend over and guess what they'll do? Go on the computer. Yep. And you one will be on the tablet. It won't be the tablet. Won't be on the computer. And they'll still do what they were doing. I'm like, why is he over here? <laughs> right. like, why? Why is Nico over here? Hi, Nico. Why is Nico over here? <laughs> if he's all going to do is the same thing, if Nico was home, like, what the true deal? story? And you, but you hit the nail on the head. The social norms are different. They're oh, very sure. different now. Yeah, but we but... didn't have this technology. So if we did, maybe it would be similar. But we didn't. Yeah. Ha- we didn't have this we didn't technology have when we were kids. But the, not only have the school systems not caught up with the norms, but most parents, if we're honest with ourselves, oh, we don't understand the value of being a creator. So when our kids come to us, it's like, hey, because when my 13 year old approached me and was like, he wanted to be a professional gamer, that the image that popped into my head was, oh, my God, you're never moving out of your mom's basement and you're going to be 400 pounds just sitting in front of a computer playing Street Fighter on. Like, yeah. that's the image that popped into my head. Get him a standing desk. (laughs) You're perfect. Get him a standing desk. But I did my research. And, you know, fun fact, esports is like a $25 billion industry. Yeah. Um, People are making real money. And that's a real career. And I have Roy Strong Thumbs. Roy Strong Thumbs. Yeah. Yeah, because carpal tunnel is real. Don't don't get it. Don't get it confused, especially when you get older. Like that ain't cheap when you're 50. Oh my God. Exactly. Man, but um, awesome. I had to do yeah. my research and I had to really come up to speed. So that's how I found myself to what I'm doing now with Stem Whispers and the Tiny Giants podcast, because Stem Whispers, the, the one sentence summary is to replace the school to prison pipeline with marketing technology career. So Love get it. the quote unquote bad kids like I used to be and get them out of trouble and get them into marketing technology, because without getting all after school special on you, um, you really do have to see it before you can yeah. be it. No, truth, exactly. truly, you have to see no, it before is. you can be it. Absolutely. And so I want to expose them to the creator economy and actually, like, you know, not ratify. That's not the word I'm looking for. Not fair. What do I like? Affirm them. Like, make sure that, yes, you can do this and yeah. here's how you do it. And Absolutely. I want to be a resource to other parents because, like I said, it would be disingenuous of me to say that I was not caught flat footed because I was. And no, so, and then, but, but that's part of what makes it so good is because you were caught flat footed and you're like, what are we going to do about this? Mm -hmm. Look, I do digital marketing. I do podcasts. I've done a hundred some episodes of this podcast. I've been podcasting and creating since 2010. I was a journalist and all that stuff. 
You know, I was caught blindsided by my kids saying, I want to be on YouTube. Yep. I should have seen the ray on the wall. I mm. didn't. I was naive. I was like, my kid's going to just play computer games. No. Yep. He's going to want, he's watching Unspeakable. He's watching Mr. Beast. And he knows these names. Like, Unspeakable? That's Unspeakable. I don't even know. But all I know is they scream a lot. Yeah. Oh, no. And they're like, put your headphones on. That kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah. So that was the journey. That was the journey. Okay. And yeah, just figuring out through all my prof- entrepreneurial endeavors that led me to the professional world and back into entrepreneurship, That's all awesome. those experiences informed that mm-hmm. I was able to pick out gaps that other people, not that they didn't see, but necessarily didn't know how to exploit. And so that's what I'm doing now. Awesome. So what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur versus being a cog in the wheel? <clears throat> so the best thing about being an entrepreneur is that you only work half days. You get to pick which 12 hours. I love it, which 12 hours. I love it. You get to pick which 12 hours. But no, there is a lot of there is a lot of freedom in so far as how you schedule your day and how you impact your life. Because another fun fact about me is that I used to weigh 400 pounds. I start every podcast by saying I'm Tia Dale, I your favorite former 400 pounder getting you fit. On all things creator economy, because pounds. so, so um, I was after... just the fear of having your kid in the basement weighing <laughs> 400 pounds is real because it's, it's like it could be genetic. Yeah, I used so to weigh 400 pounds. Wow. And so, right around the start of the pandemic, really before the pandemic started, because I started my fitness journey right. at the beginning of 2020, and the pandemic didn't really pop off until March 2020. But yeah, I've lost about 140 pounds. Um, yeah, right now, I'm going up a little bit. Um, right now, I'm probably sitting at about 265. Yeah, so I lost 140 pounds, That's and awesome. so I really take that. And during the pandemic. Yeah, during the pandemic. That's during incredible. the pandemic, where most people gain weight, I lost 140 pounds. What else are you going to do, though? <laughs> Literally, exactly. You're going exactly. to work out, one of the two. Yeah, working out. And so that's the, um, that's the approach I really take to education. And everything I do is as, as a trainer, right? So it's not I me it. pontificating or, or speaking from the ivory tower. It's. As any good trainer, Mm -hmm. I'm going to train you how to train yourself, right? Because at the end of the day, it's your body and it's your business. It's your kid. It's your career. So, yes, I'm going to take you through the motions and I'm going to show you how to do this properly in a healthy, constructive manner. But at the end of the day, you have to do the squats. You have to do the push-ups. You You have to do the cardio. You have to do the same thing with the creator economy. You have to build a brand, period. You got to build a brand. And there are best practices on how you build a brand, how you support a young person in building a brand. But at the end of the day, you got to do the work. And I'm here to help give you what you need. But we're in this together just so that we're clear. You have to put in the work. And so if you're down to put in the work, I'm down to make sure you get the result that you want. All right. So on the flip side, what is the best? What's the worst thing about being? What keeps you up at night being an entrepreneur? I am not best at, how do I want to phrase this? For me, for, yeah. and we touched on this a little bit ago, I struggle with negotiations. It's not that I'm not good at it. I do not like the process. Yeah, It just leaves me feeling bad, don't care for it. And another thing that I struggle with is planning, ma- making sure that I have a full pipeline. Mm-hmm. Like I'm really good yeah. about knocking things down once they're on my plate, mm-hmm. but it like I often find myself in a situation where you never want to find yourself as an entrepreneur, where you finish chewing through this task and it's like, okay, now what? Crickets, and, crickets. and then everything hits the skids. And then you, because when you're an entrepreneur, there is no paycheck. There's, you do a deal or you have a contract or you don't. And so you have to make sure that things overlap and flow in such a way where there's consistency. Preach. And yeah, I have, absolutely, dude. And I have that in complete transparency. I haven't always been the most consistent yeah. um, it, with my incomes. Like there, there will be time, which is one of the reasons I left agency work and I left real estate because it was so feast or famine. Like depending on how the market was mm-hmm. in real estate, you can make 50, 60 grand in a month, two months, but then that'd be it. For the next yeah. six months, and I so know if, it's the if, worst. If you don't, if you're not really good at budgeting and you're not disciplined and you're stupid like I was, and you go buy a car and take a cruise, oh, you're gonna be in bad shape, right? Yeah, you're gonna be in bad shape. Ninety days later, 
because again, you you blew through all the money, like the money was gonna keep coming, and then it didn't, and now you're like, mm-hmm. oh crap, my my pipeline's dry. Now yeah. what? So I would say that's the um, that's the worst thing about entrepreneurship is if you if you're not the best at planning, which let's be honest, a lot of entrepreneurs aren't. No, We're great at what we do. Learn, planning is cool. you, you got you got use them. Use the noodle and learn this yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm the you, same you way. You really have to be very diligent about making sure that once you, you have enough projects to yeah. sustain yourself. Absolutely. All right, so what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? The most important thing to carry with me all the time is, um, wow, that's an excellent question. I love that question. Yeah, I would say the most, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm getting right now is is to just focus on what you can control mm-hmm. and not what you can't control because if you if you are too focused on the what ifs that mm-hmm. can lead to anxiety oh something God, that yeah. I've struggled with if I'm if I'm being very transparent mm-hmm. um just just a bunch of well, whatever, whatever whatever so focusing on what you can do and just put so... one foot in front of the other and just um yeah, that that that's what I would say. Focus on what you can do, and don't and don't let yourself get whipped Love into it. a lather over or worked up into a lather over things that are outside of your control. Love it, man. Love it. So, T, where can people find you online? I mean, do they have to spell your full spell your full name to find Only you if you want to. <laughs> yeah, Wait, you, cause you I I find... love your name, but it's a long one. Yeah, yeah. this is going this is coming from a guy named Seth Goldstein. It's like kind of the Smith. <laughs> and you were joking that like your name is like the Smith of in it's like Smith in Nigeria. Mine is the Smith of Jews. Seth yep. Goldstein. It's like common. Yep, there's a billion of us. But online, yeah. thank you for that. Online yeah. you can find you can find the podcast at tinygiants.tech yes. or wherever you get podcasts. Just type yes. in Tiny Giants. We're on all of them. We're not let me know. Um, I'll let you, you know can if email I find me them. at uh, T, the letter T at tinygiants.tech and then Tiny Giants Pod on most of the platforms on Twitter, yeah. on uh Instagram, and then on LinkedIn, which is my my primary uh, social media go. network. You, you can find me on LinkedIn at T, the letter T, at Deola, A D E O L A, T Adeola, and I'll pop up. There you go. Or just check our show notes, and we'll have them there. Indeed. Indeed. T, this has been so much fun. I'm glad my computer held out. Watch yes, it sir. crash right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. And for those who didn't know, my computer's been on the fritz a little, a little bit right now. So I'm glad we got T on, and we'll see everyone next week. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast directory of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes your ears that's in the show notes and i look forward to the next episode take care guys Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Colin Jeffries and Eric Reed host a great podcast called the Rethink Marketing Podcast. Colin, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. Well, Jason, on the Rethink Marketing Podcast, we unpack the myths, misconceptions, and flat-out lies of marketing and sales. Our listeners tell us that we help bring different perspectives to common business growth, wisdom, and advice. That's great. Where can people subscribe? They can subscribe at RethinkMarketingPodcast.com or listen on their favorite podcast platform, including MarketingPodcasts.net. You heard him. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit MarketingPodcasts.net.